everyone, it's Lindsay, and today we're going to be talking about all of my unread books on my TBR pile. So I thought this would be a really cool video to do because this time next year I can look back and be like, oh, did I read all these books? I hope so because I'd be really mad at myself if I didn't. I have separated these into middle grade, adult, and young adult, and we are going to talk about them. And I'm going to start with, um, let's start with Let's start with middle grade. So the first book I have is The Extremely Inconvenient Adventures of Bronte Meadlestone, and this is by Jacqueline Moriarty. So this is about a little girl who was raised by her aunt after her parents leave to go on adventures. Well, unfortunately for her, she gets a letter that says her parents have died, and in their will, they leave her a list of things that she has to do for her own adventure. Kind of extremely inconvenient for her is that the will has been tampered with, I guess by magic, and if she doesn't complete each of the obstacles or adventures in time, bad things happen. This just looks absolutely adorable and like a super fun time and exactly what I'm looking for in a middle grade. The next book is Wondersmith, The Calling by Morgan Crow, and this is by Jessica Townsend. This is the second book in the... Well, Nevermore series, I guess is what they're calling it. I absolutely love the first one. I read it for the first time this year in January, I think, and it was so fun. Like, it's just so whimsical. It gives you, it's almost like if Harry Potter and a series of unfortunate events were mashed together. That's what the first book felt like, and I really enjoyed it, so I'm gonna get to this very soon. <laughs> Next, we have Crispin Rise of the Cross, let's see, The Cross of Lead by Avi. Um, I know very little about this. This is like a backlisted book that came out maybe like 15, 20 years ago, and I really liked A.V. as a kid, so I want to pick this up soon. The next book, you guys, I am so excited for. This is The Hotel In Between by Sean Easley. So I have been seeing this book around on Twitter for so long, and the cover is gorgeous, and that's a, that's really what drew me in, because it just looks so magical and fantastical, and those are the two requirements that I need for fantasy. Um, it's about kids that go to a fantastical hotel and gives them adventures, and like, Yes. <laughs> Next, I have books two, three, and four in the School for Good and Evil series. I really enjoyed the first book in this series. It takes place at a magical school that's like really funny. And I think it's kind of like Harry Potter. So it starts out as middle grade and then it's going to go into young adult. So I'm excited to continue with the series. Next, I have book two in the Land of Stories by Chris Colfer. This is about two kids that get lost inside of a fairy tale book and have to find their way out and they deal with all the characters that you've grown up knowing and they have to find their way home and it's super cute, super fun. You gotta get to this sometime. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That is eight middle grade books on my TBR. I am gonna be writing my own middle grade story here soon. I'm hoping to start in February or March with that draft and I would love to get into these around that time so I can just be completely immersed in middle grade. Oh, it's gonna be so nice. Okay, we're gonna move into YA. The first young adult book on my TBR is The Astonishing Color of After by Emily XR Pan. This is a fabulism story about a girl whose mother dies and she transforms into a bird and she has to go looking for her. Next, we have Saul Kill Girls by Claire Legrand. This is about a group of three girls that live in a town that has been plagued by monsters that only kill young girls, I guess. Uh, this sounds super creepy and atmospheric and it sounds like something I would just just love. Then we have Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nagan. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I'm scared to get into this. I have heard such mixed reviews since people have picked it up. Um, it made the New York Times bestseller list, which is a big deal, but a lot of those people haven't been loving it, so I'm a little, little scared. Then we have My Greatest Shame which is The Raven Boys by Maggie C. Botter. This was on my list of books in 2018 I wanted to get to before the year was over. Unfortunately, I had to make choices and this was one I had to sacrifice. So like, this has to happen. This is like a YouTube booktube classic. If you're gonna be a booktuber, you have to have read this book, right? I just realized I didn't really give like synopses for this. So this is supposed to be about a girl who sold into like prostitution or something like that and then like while she's trying to do some rebellious stuff she like falls in love with another courtesan. And then this one it's about a group of four boys and a raven and a girl named Blue who everyone seems to love very much. Now we have A Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds. This is a book told in verse about a boy who is seeking revenge because someone has killed his brother so he gets in an elevator to go kill said person and meets 
someone new on each level of the elevator as it goes down. Then I have the Deep Blue by Jennifer Donnelly. I'm assuming this is about a princess mermaid who does things and saves the kingdom. I have had this book for far too long now and really thinking about unhauling it. If you guys have read it and like it, let me know down in the comments, but I've heard so many like eh things about it. Like everyone I've talked to has rated it three stars or below, so I'm kind of not sure if I should put the effort in. But if you love it, let me know. Talk me out of it. Then I have Wild Beauties by or Wild Beauty by Anna Marie McLemore. This is a fabulism story about five women who live together in a garden and that they are cursed to live in forever. And also something about if one of them ever falls in love, that person disappears. And the very last YA book on my TBR is Keeper by Kim Chance. This is about a young girl who meets a, I think a 300 year old witch and then they go on adventures from there. They have to steal like a grimoire type magic book and keep it away from the bad warlock guy. I have been meaning to get to this for the past two Halloweens and every October I'm just so bogged down I can never pick it up. So maybe 2019's the year. And last, last but not least, we have the adults. First one is Behind Her Eyes by Sarah Pimborough. This is about a woman who kind of starts to like a man but finds out he's married but then she's also friends with the woman he's married with and there's a bunch of secrets and lies and I'm sure someone ends up dead because like that's what happens in these kind of books. Everyone has been talking about how this has a killer twist so I'm gonna see what it's all about. I'm excited. Next we have Never Night by Jay Kristoff. This is about an assassin girl and I know nothing else about it other than that this series has a very small but intense fandom. And those are the type of people that I love to be around because I am in a bunch of small but intense fandoms. So I am ready. Next we have Station Eleven by Emily St. Johnson Mandel. This is another shame because I was not able to get to it in 2018. I really want to. It's one of those things where it's literary fiction so I know it's gonna be super slow but I also know it's gonna be really beautiful so I keep putting it off because I'm like you're gonna give this like a four to five star like you're gonna like this so you don't need to read it right now which is dumb. But anyway, it's supposed to be about a group of travelers who perform Shakespeare plays after the apocalypse has happened and there's like barely any people left on earth. And the only other book that was on my books to read in 2018 that I didn't get to was Sleeping Giants by Sylvain Nouvelle. This is about a girl who finds mysterious figures and these figures are also then found all over the world and people are thinking it might be aliens but then they think that it might have like a religious thing like it might be gods. I don't know. I'm really excited for it. I've heard lots of good things. It seems to be like a slower, more um, character driven version of the Illuminae Files, which is a Y sci-fi. So I think this one will be good for me because I really liked Illuminae. This next one I have to get to or I'm going to make myself unhaul it. If I make myself unhaul it, I'm going to be mad at me. But that is Red Rising by Pierce Brown. I've had this for so long. I never have books on my TBR pile for over a year. I always make myself read them. And this one I've had over a year. I'm so excited for this. This is like an adult Hunger Games. I know I'm gonna love this. I just haven't picked it up. Next I had The Wedding Date by Jasmine Gilroy. This is about a man and a woman who get to stuck get stuck together on an elevator and then they the guy is going to a wedding of his ex-girlfriend and he needs a date so he asks this girl to come with him and then like romance blossoms. I'm not really into romance so I don't know when I'll actually get to this um, but it does feature an interracial couple which I'm really excited to read about because I don't get to read enough of those and maybe around Valentine's Day I'll be in the mood. And then we have The Bear and the Nightingale by Katherine Arden. I am very excited for this one. I have been saving this specifically for like the January, February gloomy winter time because I just think that's the perfect time to read a book like this. It is set in like a, uh, oh it is set in Russia so I thought it was like a, a fantastical Russia but it's actually a historical fiction of past Russia but then there's like magical creatures and Russian folklore and um, it's about a girl who like believes in those types of things and how those creatures interact with her. And last but not least, I have The Ruin of Kings by Jen Lyons. So I know very little about this. I actually got this, um, I won it in like an art giveaway on Goodreads though. That makes me feel super fancy. But um, it is basically marketed to anybody who likes Robert Jordan, Brandon Sanderson, or V.E. Schwab. And I'm like, okay. I think this is coming out in February, so I definitely want to read it in January. It is supposed to be Tor's most epic, big, 
starring fantasy debut apparently that's what the back cover says and I know it's like a, I think it's about like a, a king a man who is like trying to like take back the kingdom okay I actually have no idea but I'm just assuming that's what it's about because like every fantasy has that plot so I'll tell you in January when I read it but anyways you guys those are all of the books that are on my TBR I think it is 23 books in total. I like that number. I like to keep my TBR around 25. Once I start going over 25, I'm like, okay, Lindsay, you need to like calm down, girl, because like you're not going to read 25 books in a month. So um, this is a good number for me. I'm very happy with it. And I will hopefully be getting to these books. I'd like to say before June of next year. I feel like, um, hi, future Lindsay that's watching this in June that had read like three of these books and like hates herself, but... <laughs> It's fine. Anyways, let me know if you've read any of these or what is on your current TBR, what books you're taking into the New Year's with you. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.